I'm with Alan, VK6, uh, Charlie Quebec, CQ. Um, and VK0, Lima Delta. And VK0, Lima Delta. Yeah. You've just come back from uh, Heard Island. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Uh, there was a group of uh, 14 men went there, the same as the um, first expedition to Heard Island in 1947, when the first Anari base was built there, there were 14 men. And uh, one of the radio operators there uh, wrote a book about it, which is called 14 Men. So 14 was a nice number to go back this, this year, you know. So what was it like? Uh, I mean, you, you're a resident in VK6. What's, uh, what's it like going around the corner to Heard Island? Uh, very cold and very windy and very wet. In a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, out of those 14, there were 10 Americans, one Swiss, uh, one New Zealander and one Ukrainian. So... There had to be at least one Australian to go and wave the flag, so that was me. So what was your role uh, on Heard Island? Well, I, I basically looked after the tent. Uh, it, you know, once the tents were up, uh, you know, I made sure that uh, the uh, kitchen was fully operational and you know, there was, everything was where it was supposed to be. Uh, did the washing up, made sure everybody got fed, and then did eight hours on the radio. So... Walk us through, you know, six stations are operating in a shack. What's that like? Uh, you know, the cacophony must be, you know, quite amazing. Um, well, it's not a problem when you've got the headphones on because you can't hear anybody else. So, uh, you know, we had some pretty good um, quality uh, uh, headsets and uh, the, with noise cancelling um, earphones. And, um, yeah, it, to me, the quietest time was when I was on the radio because then you couldn't hear the tent flapping around. That was the, the largest noise was the tent flapping you know, and um, you, you can't hear any of the Morse code because that was all on the headphones. And there, there were a couple of the operators who on SSB who tended to uh, speak rather loudly, shall we say. But uh, once you once you had the headphones on, you couldn't hear them. So, yeah. And uh, so you're a CW or voice operator? No, I'm exclusively CW. Yeah. What's your most memorable QSO? VK6ANC, what else? So how did you get involved with this uh, with this team? Um, well, I've, I've worked um, several years in the Antarctic previously with uh, various uh, Antarctic call signs and uh, I, I was approached and uh, asked if I'd be a member because of my previous experience in the Antarctic. So that's how it ended up. I went down again. So what was your experience in the Antarctic? I mean, you don't have VK0 Lima Delta for nothing. No, I spent um, three years with the British Antarctic Survey um, back in the 70s uh, with the call sign VP8PJ. Uh, from a couple of uh, British bases in the Antarctic and uh, South Georgia as well and uh, this was all before the Falklands War um, when most people didn't know where the Falkland Islands were so it was a pretty rare call sign um, then I joined the Australian National Antarctic Research Expeditions uh, in 1999 and uh, did 15 months on uh, Macquarie Island with the call sign VK0 Mike Mike um, I know I was pretty popular on the bands then, and uh, since then I've worked um, most summers between 2000 and 2010 at the ALE camp um, at Patriot Hills with the call sign VK0 Lima Delta. So, yeah, I've spent quite a bit of time uh, down south, as it were. Yeah. So what's your role in, in an Antarctic um, expedition? Well, um, by profession, I'm a telecommunications engineer. I, uh, design and install the telecommunication systems uh, in the oil and gas industry on offshore platforms and uh, floating production platforms etc so being a radio hams uh, it's a bit like a busman's holiday really i suppose yeah so what was your your, your fondest memory taking away from uh, from hen island uh well seeing big ben was a big big thing i mean uh, i'd always wanted to see big ben because it's uh pretty spectacular uh, mountain but it's very difficult to see even when you're on Heard Island because it's the cloud is very low most of the time so we we've got a few rare glimpses of uh, Big Ben uh, when the weather suddenly cleared up and then 15 minutes later it would disappear again so uh, that was a big plus. So describe it for us. Oh well, it looks like a giant blancmange you know it's, it's basically all white uh, and there's a few ridges running down it uh, which are you know bare rock and uh, it's 9,000 odd feet high, so it's pretty big when you can see it. Hmm. Any uh, tips for uh, aspiring uh, Antarctic visitors? Uh, don't feed the penguins. Yeah.
well, it was an experience. And I don't think I'll be repeating it because people don't go to Heard Island very often. The last expedition there, VK0IR, was in 1997, so 19 years ago. So there's pretty unlikely to be another expedition there for at least 15 to 20 years, I'd say. So if you didn't work Heard Island this time, then you've got a long wait, I would say. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no worries. I'm with Alan, VK0 Lima Delta, VK6 Charlie Quebec, and of late VK0 Echo Kilo. Uh, 